We're talking about what might be the most important position for fantasy football on today's episode, and we actually have a lot of wide receiver news as well. You don't want to miss a minute. Make sure you subscribe. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in one and all the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway back with you Tuesday, April 16th. Starting to get a little warm outside. Starting to get a little bit warm here. Well, we are in Arizona, and if you are unfamiliar, what happens on tax day is that the <laughs> sun changes. The sun changes from one version of the sun that is acceptable to be around, and then it changes to one where when this morning at 7 a.m. I roll the window down in a drive through shame on me, um, <laughs> 7 a.m. drive through Wow, Jay. It's Get after it, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Thank you. the but I'm show's you, topic just changed. I'm telling you, this, my, my window tent is doing great work because when that window came down, hmm. the heat of Satan was on my face, and I couldn't believe I was like, I need to sunscreen half my face now when I go to work. <laughs> when, when you go to your morning drive through When I go to my morning drive through um, the left side of my face is toast. He's got if he starts coming in and he's half tan, and we know it's like a McDonald's tan. Um, but yeah, uh, there you go. Yeah, burns like the IRS. You know what I mean? Yeah, there you go. Well said. Uh, welcome in. We're counting down our early running back rankings today. Last week we did wide receivers, and we got some wide receiver news today that we need to talk about as well. A reminder: head over to ultimatedraftkit.com to pre-order this year's Ultimate Draft Kit. You can get the. UDK Plus, and that'll give you access to the Dynasty Pass right away. The UDK is packed with sleepers, breakouts, bus values, all of our projections, the draft analyzer, and um, probably like 20 things I didn't say. <laughs> so Minimum. We've got, we've got our crew working hard, looking forward to it, and it's pre-order pricing right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Um, lots to talk about, so let's jump right into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right. The Eagles have extended Mr. Devontae Smith. Three years, $75 million contract, $51 million guaranteed. Woohoo. So always exciting if you, you know, have Devontae Smith on a roster to know that his future is secure and um can't be said for a couple of his uh fellow draft mates in CD Lamb and Justin Jefferson so far, but Devontae Smith sets the standard. Three years, 75, 51 guaranteed. The Eagles are, I mean, I just love how they run their organization top to bottom. They're usually pretty smart with all their decisions, but they get out ahead of the whole, you know, the, if you're first to sign the new contract and you're like, oh no, I've got to set the market, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. Because if you're telling me that you're signing this contract after CeeDee Lamb and Justin Jefferson or and even Brandon Ayuk and all those type of players, this is really smart. Also, uh, from a dynasty perspective, I love Devonta Smith. And he is as good a wide receiver as you can be. And so when you're locked up for a long-term deal, like I have him in my top ten, in dynasty rankings, I've got him ahead of Waddle. I just think he's a – like, Waddle's more of an explosive athlete, but he's just not as good a wide receiver. Devontae Smith is as good as you can get at the position. So, yeah, Jefferson was the year before CD. I should clarify that. But both of those guys still need contracts. In fact, this morning, uh, just a little while after the Devontae Smith – It was – the agent had talked to Schefter and was like, hey, if any wide receivers get – an extension, you will publish this 30 seconds after. Which was that C.D. Lamb's not going to participate in voluntary workouts as he awaits his extension, which um, I believe Kyle said, C.D., you don't have to show up for nothing. You wait to get paid. You're worth it, buddy. And he is. 
And he, he will, should get paid. He will get paid. So um, Devontae Smith circling back there. I, I, The thought experiment, you know, we've had the rumblings that get, you know, shut down by A.J. Brown, but just run through the thought experiment of A.J. Brown wants out some someday. Sure. Or departs or is unhappy. Like Devontae Smith as the number one target for Jalen Hurts is – Pretty attractive. Mm -hmm. um, I and, think and he was suffering the most, and historically over the last two years suffered the most when, when like all three were healthy. So Dallas Goddard's on the field, who he dealt with injuries a couple of times in a row, but when he's on the field, some of the target share certainly yeah changes. You, you have seen him thrive the most when the consolidation goes down to him and one other target. So yeah, in the future, should something happen where AJ Brown is not an eagle, that's the, the the fantasy finish, you're, you're talking about the capability of, I believe, a top five wide receiver. T. Higgins says he expects to be playing for the Bengals in 2024. He was at a youth football camp. Some uh, reporters were asking him. And so, you know, he's rumored to be a player on the block during the draft. There were also rumors about, like, the two big names during the draft that could get traded at wide receiver are Higgins and Ayuk. There were some unverified reports this week of, like, Ayuk, formally de demanding a trade. They said that wasn't the case. But, you know, I don't think any of us would be surprised if he did cuz he would like he would like money as well. That's all he wants. If he says I want a trade, he's just saying I want a big bag of money. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, whoever's going to give me the big bag of money, that's where I want to go. Is it you San Francisco? Great. Everything uh, we're all good now. Yeah. Just give me the yeah, big yeah, I bag love of money. Here. I love <laughs> it here. Um the Browns, I was happy to see this. This I was very happy to see this as well for the man. It is what I believed in my heart about the situation, but not without great fear, knowing how impactful this player, his salary, the potential to lose him. But the Browns have restructured Nick Chubb's contract for 2024, reduced his salary cap hit down almost $10 million. It gives him the chance to earn most of it back based on performance, but it keeps him there. Uh, he did not make our, you know, here's a spoiler. He did not make the top 20. Yeah, you, you can't put him in the top 20 as of right now, having no clue where he is with the, the injury. I mean, to be clear, we don't love that Nick Chubb is making less money because he is that guy, but the concern was the Browns, if I'm remembering it correctly, they could have just <laughs> cut Nick Chubb and said, we, we, like, we can't guarantee you any money because of how of much of an injury risk you are. But at least with this restructure, he'll be there. He'll be able to rehab with their professional facilities. So hopefully he makes it back. Cause Nick, yeah. we, we, everyone loves Nick Chubb. Fi financially speaking, the the harsh and good move would have been to just cut him. Right. But this, is, yeah. this is nice. And, and for fantasy purposes, it gives you a little bit more confidence in Chubb. Obviously, knowing that he's there, uh, you, you know, prior, prior to, to the this, future plans. Yeah, prior to this um, restructure, he was someone that I had a lot of trouble considering having on a team. Like, you know, you just don't know if he has any future left, and now I'm confident he does. Matthew Betts, our injury expert, also mentioned the fact that, like, when he's cleared, it's unlikely he'll be at 100% at any point in 2024. I wouldn't put too much past Nick Chubb. I've seen the workout videos for 10 years, but – um Big time injury, and I he's mean, he's come back from a devastating knee injury in he has, his past. Yeah. So that's you know a, you know a feather in the cap for his work ethic. But it was a long we, time. Ago. I was going to say we have seen like Jamal Charles had you know a really really early career ACL that he hopped back from no problemo, and a late career ACL where it was like eh, it took a little bit more time, and you know you can argue he never really got back to the same Jamal Charles. I would expect that to be similar for a 28-year-old Nick Chubb. Uh, the Titans offensive coordinator, Nick Holtz, came out and said the team sees Pollard and Spears as interchangeable. This is not the first time I've seen this language around them, 1A, 1B. They're both going to play a ton, get a ton of carries. So Tasha is like, well, our contracts are not interchangeable. No, no, but that guy's I mean, getting a lot more money than me. What do you mean we're the same player? I'd definitely be drafting Pollard <laughs> over we Spears. Split? Can we like pool, <laughs> like share tips here? <laughs> you know, just like oh, we're we're doing the same backfield. Yo, Let's just put, I'll put it together. I'll put my contract. All in. of mine. All you of put mine. all yours, yeah. and we just fifty fifty, interchangeable. Yeah, and then every other check goes to each guy. <laughs> um, 
And then Rashi Rice update. There were arrest warrants issued for Rashi Rice. One count of aggravated assault, one count of collision involving serious bodily injury, six counts of collision involving injury, and he surrendered to police and posted a $40,000 bond. Um, he was going very fast. He was going very fast. Uh, is it Drew Davenport? Am yes. I correctly quoting that? He came out, uh, attorney, generally very trustworthy on his insights into the details of these cases. I believe his last assessment was an expectation of maybe one to two games, whereas he was at the zero game mark before details came out. We do not know anything definitively. It's still a ways away. Am yeah, I, he, am I he, no, the, representing you, that properly? You, I believe you, so. you are. I, I believe Drew Davenport, um, a good follow on, on X, uh, Drew Davenport FF, um, doesn't believe that there will be jail time here. The suspension could come from the NFL. Uh, TBD, obviously there's more information that can come out, but we'll keep you briefed as well as we can. All right, unless the uh, unless Deucer's Alley has any more news for us, do, is there anything back there we need to know about? No, sir. Okay. We'll jump into the running backs. Running backs. See? Wow. Told you. We that did. Was we jumped in. Efficient. Now we're into the running backs because of uh, the guy said so. All right. Wide receivers last week, running backs this week. And very excited to talk about these guys. There, there's some very interesting decisions to be made. And it's easy, I think, when you're talking about dynasty startup drafts, uh, dynasty rosters, to, you know, draw a pretty clear line of, you know, the age situation at running back. Yeah. Uh, you Everybody wants a young Brees Hall, B. John Robinson aged superstar. However, there aren't a lot of them. There, there just aren't. And there is a lot of trust in... Uh, I guess you'd call elder statesmen or proven veterans such as, you know, James Conner, right? And Raheem Moster with 20 touchdowns last year. And and so the the trust we saw in David Montgomery in the beginning of the year over Jameer Gibbs. And so, you know, it is interesting in redraft, I think, when you look at that age situation. You know, I don't pay too close of attention to that in a redraft format. I don't know if you guys are any different. I mean, I I pay attention because the the age cliff, it it happens. Like James Conner, James Conner is the first guy we're going to talk about here at number twenty. Who he is tied for twentieth. He has been a a true anomaly of just throughout his entire life. His story from uh, being a cancer survivor, making it into the NFL, being kind of thrust into a starting job that the team had not prepared for in the Pittsburgh Steelers with Le'Veon Bell deciding to hold out and then James Conner was excellent seemed like the like and it seemed like he just it burned way too bright James Conner's career was done Arizona brought him in we we all lamented like we're like oh come on really we're giving James Conner that amount of money and he's come to Arizona and he's been went on the field fantastic I I have been proven as wrong as possible about James Conner. I feel like it's a testament to somebody just working so incredibly hard that yeah. he overcomes every obstacle. You would have thought worse situation in Arizona, which I think, you know, I guess not because 4.3 a carry in 2022, five a carry last year. He had his first thousand yard season. Uh, he and David Montgomery are tied at 20. So we're talking about them. Um, we're talking about Connor now. We'll talk about Montgomery a little bit more in the conversation with Gibbs later. But James Connor is going to be one of the more interesting draft picks. It, you can see, you can see the story playing out where, you know, his best ball ADP is twenty. Arizona will have Kyler Murray from from week one. Improvements to the offensive line. And yet he's not gonna he's not gonna rise. No, he's not gonna rise in draft positioning because the, the the fatigue and and the story it's just like are we entering the Frank Gore category for James Conner we could be his his style of play says that I think he can actually age gracefully he is 
bigger and stronger. He's one of those weird players where he has so many runs of 15 yards and like no runs more than 20. You know, he's not breaking away down the field, but you just you but can't gets tackle the first him for line, a while. Yeah. Um, so he's he's really really good. The question really becomes: Is he? It's it's weird and and it feels almost silly to to talk like this, but he was so much better when the Cardinals were terrible and Kyler wasn't there after his injury, you know, in the, in the first season. And then, um, so you just worry a little bit about like, is, is he going to be, um, is he going to be the same to the offense that he was when they didn't have a quarterback? But we did see at the end of last year when Kyler came back, you know, some, some confidence building games in Connor's ability. If, if the Cardinals take that step forward, there's always, every single year, there's a team that goes from worst to first in the division. And you you take a look at why. It's usually a quarterback change, you know, whether it's you drafted C.J. Stroud and all of a sudden you had a surprisingly good offense, or maybe you have Kyler from the beginning. They're, they're definitely a candidate to take a leap forward offensively, which, you know, is good for touchdown opportunities. And at this point, looking at the depth chart, the offseason move that the Cardinals made, they brought D.J. Dallas in from – uh, from the Seattle Seahawks, he's kind of it just like a, a, he does everything. He is a, he's a backup. I, I don't, I'm not gonna go horn for DJ Dallas. He's just a special Beca teamer because yeah, he could play special teams. He can fill in here and there, but he's not a he's not a starting caliber running back. And then the the rest of the depth chart like Michael Carter. Yeah, that one gets a horn. Michael Carter gets a horn, and, and deservedly so. And then Amari DiMarcato, who owes me seventy-two dollars <laughs> a fab. I'm still waiting on that. <laughs> I, do you send an invoice I, for that? I do every month. I've sent it over. And I've said, sir. The idea of a you I had to like I, collections. Yeah, I had I ran out of fab because I needed you, and it didn't work out. The idea, uh, and uh, we are we are like the biggest proponent. Don't tag. Yeah, yes, yes. Don't tag players. Don't write them letters. Don't yell at them from the stands because they didn't get you what you wanted in fantasy, but you may invoice them for fab. <laughs> <laughs> like you can send them just a formal, no, no emotional commentary, just a formal invoice for fab with a return address. I accept that. Um, no, the depth chart's not intimidating. The only thing, the only thing that intimidates me about James Conner that I think makes him an appropriate pick at RB20 versus 10 or something like that is he's going to miss football games. He 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 has yeah, missed he football games. Arizona, two games uh, in his first season, four the year after, four last year. He's missed time. It's just what happens. Um, he's got a, a violent running style, and he, you know, he handles a lot of work. Yeah, and I mean, so, it, he's coming into his eighth season. He's never played a full season. So he will miss games. You have to have that protection, but he's not going to be one of your first draft picks. I mean, you're talking about a guy who's probably in the fifth round or so. Yeah, and he uh, he he was very very good league winner last year, but the injury situation, Mike, puts you right on schedule to pay seventy two dollars <laughs> for another Cardinal backup at some point during the year. Cardinals should be adding offensive talent. Hopefully, Marvin Harrison, uh, Trey McBride broke out over the back half of the year. So to Jason's point, if the offense shifts a little bit more. Uh, to the passing game, I I just don't think Connor can get himself off the field. I mean, he's just too reliable. So solid RB two. Like if I had him as an RB two for my team, I would be thrilled. I agree with depth though. I want some depth. So are we? I'm I, pretty sure you said death. I heard death. I <laughs> want some death. Okay. Well. I would I would recommend depth <laughs> over that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, stronger than what I you know depth. Okay. Depth. <laughs> that's not a good that's not an easy word it's not super depth. easy but you know it's, it's like an a important Donald part Duck. Of, important part of life depth depth <laughs> yes it's depth. Right. This, this show's all about life and depth okay <laughs> this is a life and depth type of fantasy depth comes for us show. all yes it does yeah all right uh, i guess we're gonna take a quick break and come Thank back goodness <laughs> with number 18 Well, like I said, we're pressing pause on Montgomery. He's sitting at 20, but we'll talk about him in the context of Gibbs later. We have another tie at 18. This is our consensus early rankings. This is not us statting out every single player for every single team like we do for the UDK. This is the first early gut where we'd take them before the draft. 
as we break it down. Aaron Jones is at 18. James Cook is at 18. Uh, to me, this is one on the way up, one on the way out, personally. I have a ton of respect for what Aaron Jones has done in his career, but I am very hesitant what a 29-year-old Aaron Jones is going to be able to produce fantasy-wise in a new home with a bad quarterback. I don't trust it. So for me, I'm the lowest by far. You guys actually have him at 15 and 17. You think maybe you get, um, you know, like when Connor switched teams, some resurgent years, I am much more reticent. I don't think he's done. Like, I don't think Aaron Jones has lost anything. He comes out last year, was the running back one at, uh, in the first week, and then, if you remember, injured himself on, like, a huge breakaway run. Yep. Took a while to kind of get back to it, but then at the end of the season, when he was back on the field, he had a really nice stretch run for the Packers, it was top 24 each week of the last month. So when, when, I, when I view him as, like, he's coming over – into essentially the Dalvin Cook role as a later stage. Like he, he, I like that you skipped Madison completely. That was like you went two years back. Well, you don't want that. Well, role. right. Yeah, he's I mean, coming right into a, the role that Madison couldn't come close to filling. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but I think Aaron Jones can. He's not going to go into the Madison role. He's going to go into the Dalvin Cook role. And so if Aaron Jones still has it, you've got a really valuable role on – what could be maybe not as good an offense? I mean, it won't be as good as as a, as a Kirk led offense. So you've got um, some issues here, but I, even still, like they the like offense is better for Buffalo, obviously. But the touchdown opportunities are way more in Aaron Jones' favor than than James Cook. Uh, James Cook just is not part of the touchdown. Like they 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 tell him you're not allowed to score touchdowns if we're inside the ten. Get out. Get off the field. I, I mean, they like Ty Chandler too, right? Yeah, so like the Dalvin do. Cook role was to be everything. This is going to be a, a subpar offense, at least in my head right now, with multiple backs and an Aaron Jones that missed six games last year. So I, I am hesitant, Mike. You're more in the middle. Um, running backs under Kevin O'Connell is not good. The rushing percentage, 30th, two consecutive years. The attempts, 28th. Two consecutive years. So, and last year they couldn't score any touchdowns on the ground. So, for me, the, Aaron Jones was a, like a, I know it's crazy, but he's like an off the board guy for me. Like really? I, he's 100% off the board because wow. I, I think where you have to take him is not RB18 in best ball. It's not worth the risk to me. Like, I, I mean, we just talked about a guy that's two picks later. I would take Connor over Jones every day. So, um, just different opinions there. Mike, did you have any thoughts on Jones before we talk about Cook? I'm just I'm more in line with Jason of I the seeing him close out the season was nice. Now, I mean, three of those games that Jay cited, in three of them he was he was 57 percent of the snaps or fewer. So I mean, this was still the part time Aaron Jones that he has always been utilized, or when he's really succeeded, he's been a, a timeshare back. So I, and I do think that there will be a a higher timeshare with Ty Chandler than the immediate signing of Aaron Jones would indicate. But uh, but I still think that he has juice and he he will have some really explosive games. So I, I think that at RB eighteen, it's not it's it's not terrible. I think it really comes down to whether or not you believe he's post being good. I mean, uh, you you can argue about the offense, but you know, two years ago, Dalvin Cook was the running back ten. Um, the last year they Alexander Madison wasn't the dude. Uh, so if Aaron Jones is kind of toast, if he's washed, he's old enough. You know, he's gonna be he's twenty nine point three years old as of today. So if you, that's where you've got to plant your flag. It's like I think he is completely on the way out. Like you said, Andy, one guy's on his way up, one guy's on the way out. But if you think he's still got it, he's he should be. I don't see why he wouldn't be valuable for fantasy. James Cook, twenty four point six years old. RB12 in best ball, finished as the finished as the RB11 last year. Wow, RB12? Uh, extremely explosive. You know, he, he ran for 1,100 yards last season, um, 54 targets. You know, a lot of talk about Diggs leaving, and oh, Kincaid and Shakir, they're going to step right in. Guess what? James Cook is a big part of the offense, and if you take Diggs off the field, Cook factors in in a tremendous way. I don't feel like 
the volatility that we saw in the first half of last year is going to resurface with James Cook, personally. I don't think the ride is as smooth or predictable because he's not prototypical. But I do believe that you won't leave many games. You will, you're will. you entering the Eckler phase of James Cook's career. Well, that would be fantastic. It's, well, Eckler was a touchdown machine. Yeah, it it's hard where when I'm shocked at the running back 12, sure, maybe there's an explosion upcoming here for James Cook, but he has four rushing touchdowns. Not last year. In his career. Granted, he had four receiving touchdowns. We, we love seeing that. But e Eckler finishes the RB6 with three rushing touchdowns. But what were his targets? In 2019. Yeah, the, he, had, he had 108 targets. Right. I, I don't – I just mean that you didn't you, – when you when Eckler began his journey, I'm not saying it's a match on every stat. I'm saying when he began his journey, people didn't pick him because you didn't see the normal path to – you know, this isn't a guy that gets 20 carries and, and – Looks like Saquon Barkley's stat line until he developed into that. Um, do you have the? I mean, do you have that kind of hesitation with James Cook saying, "Well, at twelve, I have to take him," but I don't know if he's going to be a huge part of the game plan this it's, week. If for him, in my opinion, for him to come through at the RB twelve price draft price, he he has to see his targets go from last year was was fifty four, caught forty four of them. That is tremendous. Yeah, where does that need to get to? 10 yards of, uh, of a completion. He's got to get up into like the mid-70s, maybe the low 80s for for him to have a chance, in my opinion, because receiving touchdowns are, aside from Austin Eckler when he went on that heater, it's still really hit or miss, really fluky for some of these receivers. They have spike years, and then they just vanish in receiving touchdowns. It's wild. He was fifth, He was third in the NFL in yards from scrimmage. Yeah. James Cook was He's number three. A, he is a tremendous player who just he does not get used near the goal line, but we have we have seen uh, through research and things. I I believe Kyle put out the Borgononi put out a, a a great article. Kyle, if you want, was that your article about the vacated targets? Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, so where Kyle did a huge study about we always want to plug the the new wide receiver in of just gobble gobble. Give me all the those targets. Go right to this guy. Vacated targets are actually uh, – there's a strong signal that the running back will see their target share go up. So he could get there, but I think that is – it's it's risky. I have a really, really hard time with wanting James Cook on my roster. The touchdowns are scary. But when I pull back and think about kind of things that hit historically in fantasy football, like you said, Mike, the vacated targets that go to a running back. What What is James Cook? Real superpower for fantasy, it's catching the ball. It's not It's not the, the rushing, even though his rushing yards were great. Touchdowns are my big fear, but touchdowns are not a sticky stat either. And if he already finished as the running back 11, whilst not having the touchdowns, and he's being drafted at running back 12, maybe you're actually getting him around the floor, and should he have that kind of fluky but – you know, very possible 10 touchdown season, then you're talking about a league winner. So I, I think maybe I've been mentally too low on James Cook. He is in a good offense. They desperately need him. He is the perfect age. Usually the top peak season for running backs is 24 years old. So I need to readjust kind of how I'm viewing James Cook. I just don't like the archetype. That's why I think he's the uh, – I said I'm not drafting Aaron Jones. For Cook, I like – you just draft him and just like I'm not going to try to figure out how it happens. It's just going to be fine. <laughs> that's that's how I feel about him. Kamara at seventeen. Oh boy, Alvin He's Kamara. This is not 20, my fault. Twenty eight point seven years old. Mike has him at nineteen. I have him at nineteen. Jason at fourteen. What you doing? What uh, am look, I, I what am are you very. Doing? I'm very comfortable with Jason's ranking because he's on my dynasty team. <laughs> um, he's he finished at RB fourteen. Jason, give us the uh, give us the bullish case for yeah, he, for an older Alvin Kamara. Well, he basically missed, what, five games last yeah, season. Yeah. He finished as the running back 14. And during the stretch, if you don't remember. Pretty good case so far. If you don't remember what he did last year with this offense that really doesn't look like it's going to retool a lot. They've got, they're going to have the same uh, quarterback who's going to dump it down to Kamara, and they've got the same wide receiver core. Maybe they add a, running, uh, a wide receiver in the draft, but it's not going to be something that takes the targets away. Here are the game logs of fantasy finishes once Kamara came back. 
from uh, was his, his, his was a suspension. A suspension, right? So he was the running back 12, 7, 12, 2, 4, 22, 14, 14, 2, 20, 16. He was a, a, a running back one most of those weeks. At worst, he finished running back two, and then he had one bad week, running back 44 in week 16, and then got injured. So, like, I don't. I, I think he's really interesting because he's older. He got injured at the end of the year, was suspended to start. I think he's being lost in the shuffle. He seems like as safe a, a floor player when you are receiving targets at the volume that he had them. I mean, his pace for targets – during his healthy games last year, was 120 targets. You just talked about the, you know, kind of crazy Eckler year yeah. where he had 108 targets. He was so hyper targeted when he was on the field, and I don't see that changing this year. His contracts. I'm looking at it right now. So he's under contract this year, and if they had cut him or anything, it would have been an 18 million dead cap. There's no chance. You know what his dead cap is next year? Oh, it's got to be astronomical. 10.1. Really? Yeah. So like he. It seems like he's going to play for them for two more years, like like Mostert esque type of situation. And then he still has a six six million dollar dead cap the year after that. Yeah, they love pushing that can. <laughs> the, I mean, it's Saints. just his his numbers don't make sense for talking just pure fantasy. If you, okay, a running back with 180 carries, 694 yards, that's 3.9 a carry. He had five rushing touchdowns. Okay. Caught 75 passes for 466 yards. We, we James Cook, by the way, was uh, 44 catches for 444, 445 yards. So way, way more efficient. One receiving touchdown for Kamara. And yet the running back 14 on the year. I think that's Please. my 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 biggest hesitancy here with Kamara is it was gross. Like this, <laughs> yeah, it's, like you don't deserve this, it. This is longest run of the year with 17 yards. Never had a 20 yard run. Like it, in standard leagues, he had to 3. be like 9, the running back 32. 3.9 3. Like. a carry. These numbers are terrible. Well, if you remember, this was the worst team to watch, and the worst quarterback to watch, and the reason why was Alvin Kamara, because every mm -hmm. single play, Derek Carr would. That part is that's not Drop his back. fault. No, but it was like it was just bad offense. It was just it hurt their team. He wouldn't throw to Olave or to open wide receivers so down I'm the saying, field because he I'm just dumps Kamara. it down. And then the whole defense like goes, "Hey, should we just like get right on Kamara because they're gonna throw the ball to him?" So like every time he'd catch the ball, it's like he didn't even lead him and give him the ball in good opportunities. So it was it was disgusting, Carr, but it's gonna work for fantasy. And I say this strictly out of respect. He has no courage. That is very respectful. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's yellow. A coward. Yeah. <laughs> Respectfully. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. And so cowards, check it down. Do you think like and when I, he goes into the bathroom in the morning and he turns on the light, that he scares himself in the mirror? <laughs> like he's he turns Whoa. the light on. Oh my god, oh, that's me. Okay. <laughs> Whew. Um, oh no, Derek. Derek. I'm sorry. I I think that cowards are good for Alvin Kamara. Yeah. So Raheem Moster comes in at Kick six. that ball just, out. Dude, the numbers. No, well, we're moving on. Don't we're make moving on. sense. 16 is Raheem Mostert. He is 32 years old. So you can sit there and go, oh, Alvin Kamara, is, his best yeah. time is behind him. He's 28. Mostert's 32. You, you, he, you spoke about it at the beginning, Andy, but just to really take a, a, a look at the whole landscape, this year in redraft, you are playing old running backs. That's going to happen. The influx of newer, younger running backs, that they, they didn't pan out. This year's draft class doesn't look great. Last year, yeah, you got Bijan, you got Gibbs. But all the rest, the Charbonnet, the Kendra Miller, Tajay Spears, Tank. like it They're just, not like set up for this year's to it, take the mantle. Exactly right. So for fantasy, at the end of this season, you're going to have older running backs by like by that I mean like 27 28 29 or 32 uh where they will matter and they will be on the championship winning team so you can't play scared of the age at running back this year and there's no greater example than Raheem Mostert and you have him the highest so I want to hear from you because this was a player that entered last season with 19 touchdowns in his in his entire career he had 21 last year in 15 games in he 15 had, games, he was the running back two. He had 20 carries inside the five. I mean, when you look at his numbers on the ground, 
just the carries and the yardage, like this was almost identical to what James Conner did. Conner was 208 for 1040, right? And Raheem Mostert was 209 for 1020 or 1012. So it was touchdowns, right? And that is tough. Like you're not, I mean, you're not getting 21 touchdowns this year. You're not getting 21 touchdowns, but if you had to take the over under on 10 total touchdowns, I think you you'd probably be right around there. You're you're yeah, I mean I I'm probably going to stat them out. This is a great offense that's going to score a ton of points and when they get down around the goal line, you either have little itty bitty baby boy and you know, I love Devon Achan, but that's not who they're giving the ball to get this touchdown. They're giving it to Mostert in the easiest way to score touchdowns around the goal line is not passing the ball, it's running the ball. Kyle Shanahan knows that's why Christian McCaffrey gets so many touchdowns. And you've got Mike McDaniel coming over, and he's going to do the same thing with Mostert. They're going to do it over and over and over again. They did it last year. He had he had seven games as a top 10 fantasy running back and only two games all year where he wasn't a top 24. Mostert again, this is, is he's criminally undervalued. This is really good news, again, for my – Elderly dynasty team. Uh, thank you, Jason, for really advocating for me Cam to not and most sell are players. <laughs> um, I have him at 18, Mike at 18, but all of us are too, uh, are much higher than the consensus. I wanted to bring it up because he's RB24 in best ball. Disgusting. So you're you're kind of uh, – that's egregious to you. It's egregious. He was the running back two last year in 15 games. Now, like, it's, like we said, he's not going to get 21 touchdowns, but he's on a great offense. He's going to be the at worst – one B. What about if being thirty-two HM, years old? So a lot's made about that. Obviously, age cliffs are real, but he hasn't slowed down yet. And you also have to keep in mind when when you look at a human being, Raheem Mostert's thirty-two years old. He spent the first umpteen years of his career not being a running back, not carrying the ball. You know, his rushing attempts by the time he got into year five of his career were a grand total of, let me look this uh, up, 41. 41. 41 carries in his first, when he got into his fifth season. So, yeah, he's a little bit older, but he has tread on the tires. We'll talk more about him in the context of Devon A. Chan. And late, they paid him. Later on. Yeah, they did. They did. They reworked his contract to give him another, like, commitment year. Like, I, another year where he's a part of this equation. If Raheem Mostert's best ball ADP sticks at running back 24, he's going to be on, like, 100% of my... Like, there's no way I won't take him by the time he gets we to the running back. got to get this guy 18. a jersey. I'm in. I'm in yeah, on Mostert. Mostert yeah. man over here. Mostert man and Mustard man. Yeah. You love Mustard, too. I do. Bijan and Raheem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll take another quick break and come back and talk about, uh, I think, a controversial name with uh, some fear surrounding him. I hope it's the name that's controversial. Yes, the name is very <laughs> offensive. All right, it's time for that controversial name. At 15, Mike is the highest at 12. I've got him at 15. Jason to 17, it's Kenneth Walker the third, just 23 years old. Back-to-back -back seasons finishing at RB16 and RB19. I'll be honest, I'll hand the baton to Mike to talk about uh, his, his uh, ranking, which is a little bit of high, higher than best ball ADP. Kenneth Walker is just a confusing player to me. I'm going to just set the table there. He's confusing because there are times when he has the football in his hand where I think maybe he's the best running back that I've seen that day. And yet, you know, under a thousand yards, uh, he's missed two games each of the last two years. Doesn't catch a ton of passes. So I kind of feel like he's capped Mike. Yeah. I, I think that's a fine stance uh, stance to have on Kenneth Walker. It's just that he's he's very explosive. I I think he makes a a lot of mistakes, but the athleticism and the strength overcome those mistakes uh, frequently, and then they turn into a lot of touchdowns. Uh, we had eight rushing touchdowns last year. He had you know as a rookie, it was nine where he wasn't even the starter to begin the year. The the Zach Charbonnet, despite our our love for him he looked really overmatched last year just as the backup and now and now you have the team saying we're we're going to be a high t team we we want to get back to running the ball geno smith had some unfortunate regression last year 
uh, from his true superstar breakout campaign a couple years ago. So it's it's more of just projecting that Walker will have huge games, and I think that he is locked in to be the 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 far more productive of the timeshare, more more running back attempts to go around for this team, and so just young enough and explosive enough that I think he can outperform that ADP. Yeah, the the bear case is simply that I he doesn't catch passes. He wasn't efficient as a goal line back, despite having plenty of touchdowns. A lot of times they come from outside of where they are more predictable. So if he doesn't get the touchdowns and there's a new coaching regime where we don't know, you know, the the loyalty isn't necessarily there. I do think he's a great back. He's a very explosive athlete. But it's like if he's in a timeshare and he doesn't catch the ball and maybe the touchdowns start to move. I know it sounds reminiscent of last year after they yeah, brought Charbonnet sure. in, but there's still some yellow flags that just make me go elsewhere. All right. Well, uh, Derek Henry comes in at 14. It seems like he'd be lower if it wasn't for yours truly. I have him at 11. Mike at 14 and Jason at 18. I am a little shocked at Jason's uh, dunking on Derek Henry after he just, you know, Age boosted Raheem Mostert. Derrick Henry had a horrible year last year, all to the tune of 280 for 1167 and 12, and the RB8. He goes into a better situation. Gus Edwards, who I think at times we didn't remember played football, was the RB20 last year. He came in only to 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 do the touchdown. Which they, is they said, "Will you do the <laughs> touchdown thing?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, again? again? I don't get to do Gosh. anything else." Like that's true. And what's crazy is just doing the touchdown in Baltimore was a top 24 back. So to me, this is not me believing Derrick Henry is going to have a volume resurgence. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think you're actually going to see maybe the lowest volume that we've seen ever from Derrick Henry, or at least in recent memory. But I think he will do the touchdown. I think he will be big, good touchdown. He'll be the touchdown doer for sure. Big, good touchdown. Um, Yeah, I mean, as the touchdown doer, there is a, a really nice – uh, floor for him. You're you're not going to have Keaton Mitchell, you know. He got hurt didn't coming he? back oh, off the injury yeah. as a smaller back doing the touchdown thing. That'll be Derrick Henry's. And Gus is gone. Yeah. What, so, what do you think the floor is, Jay, for Derrick Henry rushing touchdowns? Oh, it, assuming he's healthy, the floor is probably twelve. That was so, R, that was RB eight last year. Um, I mean, uh, uh, again, maybe the, not the volume though. Maybe yeah, maybe the, he's two forty for. Uh, a thousand yards. I'm guessing that they don't overwork him through the course of the season. This is a team who's Playoff, trying to win yeah. a Super Bowl, just like you saw kind of the second half of Travis Kelsey last year. He could do it. He was frustrated that Andy Reid was like not keeping him on the field all the time. And then they got to the playoffs, and it's like, okay, now, hey, it's Kelsey, you see why I was doing that? <laughs> I, I could see them doing that a little bit with Derrick Henry. He's going to get the touchdowns. I think he's got a safe floor as an RB2, but I worry about the upside because he doesn't catch the pass. And I don't think he's going to be a, a workhorse in Baltimore. Now, we'll have to see what they do w with the depth chart. Right now, an injured Keaton Mitchell, Justice Hill, and Derrick Henry, they might just be forced to use him more than I think. Uh, if they come out of the draft without a running back, maybe I'll ad adjust my expectation for more volume. But as of right now, I think he's going to do all the touchdown things, uh, get plenty of work because he's just a great, awesome running back, but not catch the ball much and – you know, be a safe floor RB two. The the numbers, the rushing numbers for Baltimore. Granted, they have a rushing quarterback. Uh, first in rushing attempts per game. First in rushing rate at fifty percent. And fifth plays inside the ten. Yeah, I would. Love, That's the good stuff. Well, I that, would love to see running back course compared. Because still, you know, when you add Lamar Jackson, you're yeah, going but even to be there. even stepping back from the the rush rate, plays inside the ten, fifth. Give, get Derrick Henry on an offense, and they maintain anywhere around that. Either, I think twelve is a safe is a safe bet for rushing touchdowns. They are, they've also come out and said that they want to I think bring the running game back in even better form, more like the Roman Greg Roman days, or at least bend it back a little bit from what they did last year. They did lose three offensive linemen. I, I was going to bring that up. They are. Uh, Odds on favorites to take an offensive lineman in the draft to help repair some of their. They lost um, two guards in a tackle. Uh, so looking looking at the like the totality of the running backs, just the team. 
So the Ravens running backs as a team were the fourth most fantasy points. Okay. Well, look, so you every can, you consolidate that. Every fantasy player is going to be required by law to select an old man to be one of the yeah. running backs. Yeah. Because we're gonna I mean, we're gonna enter that territory again. Henry is a perfect UDK prospect because you know, you, you stat him out or you, you don't stat him out and you just go, I think he's gonna be like this and not used this way. But when you actually stat these guys out and see how many rushing touchdowns he is projected to have and how that compares, I could see him ending up as like my R B six. Joe Mixon comes in at thirteen. Houston Texan running back Joe Mixon long term yeah <laughs> they signed him they paid him money and uh he gets to re rejuvenate his career in Houston with a good offense last year 257 for 1034 and 9 that was somehow good enough with the the pass catching numbers for RB5 in Cincinnati and so you know led the NFL in carries inside the 10 last year so you know steady at this point in his career, not explosive necessarily, but reliable. And hard not to be excited when you saw Devin Singletary have success to look at Joe Mixon and say, well, probably a little more versatile, a little bit bigger, um, definitely going to be a goal line threat. We all have him similarly ranked. Uh, another steady option for fantasy players. We have him at 13. I Joe Mixon is, is such a – difficult player for me to get a gauge on because it seems like almost every off season it felt like the correct bet is to bet against Joe Mixon where his numbers his efficiency numbers are straight doo-doo when you're talking about on the ground for a guy getting that amount of work where what his sophomore season 4.9 we're like oh Joe Mixon's going to be incredible uh running the ball then it was Four one three six four one three point nine. Just efficiency is not not great, but still getting all of the work. And then Andy, the the Devin Singletary point, high powered offense. How do you not get excited about it? And yet, I it will will Mixon make the transition from the team? Will it will it be really smooth? Will he see targets? Last year, Houston, fifteen percent of their targets went to the running back position. That would be thirtieth. It's going to be no. hard to see a no. lot of targets with three great wide receivers and one tight end that can right. catch the ball. That and is that a is that fifteen percent? Is that C.J. Stroud and his the way that he plays the game and with the the way that the offense runs? Was that the personnel? He just didn't feel like I want to check it down all the time to guys like uh, Damian Pierce when he's on the field every, every once in a while, and then Devin Singletary. There are so many questions. Running backs. I wonder if Kyle we, knows this question. Oh, just ask to, away. Sorry, just to follow up because you mentioned, like, are the targets going to be there? And we always say, well, when great wide receivers like James Cook, right, you lose Stephon Diggs. So sometimes the running backs benefit from the target share. Right. So does it work in reverse when Diggs joins Probably. your team? Probably. If I'm, Diggs joins your squad, do, do, do the running backs, are they the ones that sacrifice? I'm curious if he knew that question. Like, if <laughs> Did he you know that, that Andy was going to ask Did that? you know that he was going <laughs> to ask that question? <laughs> No clue. <laughs> okay, get he more did, into he did not know the question. So uh, he. What just, about the answer to the question? Ah, that's that's different. Hmm? Kyle, look it up. TBD. TBD. Look it up. Right. TBD. Well, but uh, but yet again, I mean, I have him ranked where his current best ball ADP is, but he he it feels like where Andy's shaping up like Aaron Jones looks like a guy who may not be someone I'm drafting. I don't. Joe Mixon, there's there's so many true green flags about the situation, and yet I find myself hesitant. I, I am not hesitant. I'm more hesitant in best ball because I don't think he's going to be one of these guys who has these giant explosive games, but over the course of the season. Accumulation. Gonna, accumulation. So you're talking redraft leagues, your your home league. If, if I can get him as my RB2, heck yeah, brother. Look, Devin Singletary is a, is a fine back. I don't think he's a bad back. I think he's pretty good. I don't think Joe Mixon is a great back. However, Joe Mixon, greater sign, Devin Singletary. Joe Mixon's a better back than Devin Singletary is. And if you look at what happened last year with Devin Singletary, they started the season where Singletary was 21% he... of snaps, 36% of snaps, 29, 36, 35. Like he wasn't, he was, it was supposed to be 
Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce. But Damian Pierce wasn't good, so they're like, you know what? Singletary's better. And then once Singletary got 75, 81, 85, rest of the season, he was on the field the majority of the time, and he was the back. During that stretch, was which was from week uh, 10 on, he was the running back nine. Devin Singletary was. There's a good offense. They paid a lot to get Mixon, signed him long term. So there's no doubt week one, week five, week 10, week 12, depending. No matter how he's he performs, the he's, he's the, the guy. guy. Yeah, no, it's a good point. And um, I feel like this next guy on the list, people are believing for very much the same reason. Josh Jacobs comes in at 12 on our ranks. Uh, Mike is the only one above best ball ADP, which is at nine. I'm at 12, Jason at 16. It, You know, you can't look at last season and say Josh Jacobs looked great on the football field because he didn't. He looked bad. 233 for 805 and six. Fat Thor came in. Caught 37 passes, didn't score through the air, finished at RB27, full dud of a season after leading the National Football League in rushing. Green Bay, a franchise that makes a lot of good decisions, a head coach that I trust, you know, one of the best in the league. I agree. In my opinion. And so that says something to me about, look, do you you move on from Aaron Jones, you reset the age clock at running back, you bring in Josh Jacobs, 26 years old, you believe – and, and, again, the, the Raiders wanted him back. So Pierce, Antonio Pierce believed, and then you have the, the Packers believing that this guy is is going to be worth the trade, be worth the uh, the contract, rather. Yeah, they, so the way that it went down, I, this is a well-run franchise, of not just head coaching but but the way that they manage their team as well. Um they're 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 smart they tried to get Aaron Jones to restructure his deal they wanted to keep him he didn't want to take less money and they saw an opportunity to get three years younger and go to Josh Jacobs and the way they did that was a brilliant they gave him a bunch of money up front said hey here you go they structured it to where if it doesn't work out this year it's pretty much a one-year deal they can move on have not that much dead cap and get out of the contract after this season going into the 2025 season so I am a little bit afraid because of the way that they structured this and because of what we saw on the field last year, the inefficiencies with Josh Jacobs, the fact that he was 3.5 a carry. I mean, he just didn't look good. He was he was very, very uh, inefficient. Now, he hasn't hit an age cliff at 26 that I'm, like, terrified of. But when you get all this volume on a back that starts getting inefficient, now he changes teams, I don't think he has an infinity leash here. And if he just sucks, I worry about him. Now, he is on the every other year plan of success for right, fantasy yeah. in his career. So if you want to take that yeah. analysis, you know, he's gone back and forth, kind of a red light, green light situation. This last year, bad. Maybe it's great. But I find myself a little bit more afraid of Josh Jacobs only because what we saw last year was bad. And yes. so it's like that's my that's where my fear comes from. His situation is great. I think he'll be more utilized in the passing game. LaFleur's talked about that. So if he if he hasn't lost it, he should be great for fantasy. But I've got that I've got kind of the heebie jeebies of like, Ooh, I don't want to I don't want to draft a guy after watching him suck. Again, I I think that's a very fair assessment. Uh I hope that we are going from Fat Thor to uh the Love and Thunder body. Oh, okay. Or whatever the name of the, the new movie was, because Thor was looking uh shredded. Much better. <laughs> much much more shredded in that movie. And Currently, should the Green Bay Packers be putting Josh Jacobs out and get really mad, really frustrated, they pull him out. It's a Who, good point. Who's going it. in the game, Jay? AJ Dillon. <laughs> so, yeah. so Josh Jacobs. So, so Fatter Thor. <laughs> yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna be like, okay, we got to go back. So it's just this is a, uh, it's it's a bet on the Green Bay Packers for for me with Josh Jacobs of the cash, I. I think that Josh Jacobs will be close to a three down running back where in, in a world where we get very few of them. And this is why Emmanuel Wilson should be on dynasty rosters. Rashad white comes in at 11 to round out our uh, first half of the top 20 running back early rankings. Rashad white was the RB seven last year. I called him baby CMC because he, he or discount CMC rather. He, he was, he was awesome. Um, Fantasy production-wise, not efficiency on the ground-wise. It was a playoff team. They didn't bring anybody else in to usurp him last year. That was a surprise. The draft, there were eyeballs on it. That's why there was there, some Sean Tucker and there belief. there will be again. There, there was belief in Sean Tucker, but 
again, I think that I don't think this team's going to draft a running back I because they paid Chase Edmonds to come back and be Chase Edmonds. I think they loved what they got from White. I don't think it was, you know, these teams don't evaluate players through a single metric like yards per carry. You know, they they won a lot of football games. They they salted away the clock a lot at the end of games, which doesn't help your primary running backs numbers. He was one of the best wide receivers, so to speak, in football at the position. He caught 64 of 70 targets. 70 times Baker Mayfield said, I need to throw it to this guy. And 64 times he caught the football. 91%. That is That's pretty good. That is just so valuable. He is he is the same case that you made for Alvin Kamara is can be made for White. White was not crazy explosive on the ground. Kamara's numbers were terrible on the ground. And yet you have to keep him on the field. Yeah, obviously, TBD, if something changes, I agree with you, Andy, that they are not actively seeking to fix this running back room. When you listen to Todd Bowles talk about this team and about this running running back group, they are all in on Rashad White. The fact that they brought Baker Mayfield back, we can be confident in the checkdowns continuing. So if this depth chart stays the same, I think you have to assume similar volume uh, so long as he can continue to stay healthy. He played 17 games, and that's oftentimes the hardest stats to repeat for running backs. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, there, there's there's not much you can not like about the situation. And obviously he's, you know, several years younger than Kamara, so maybe he is – the better bet well he his yards per completion were uh, much better than Alvin Kamara it it comes down to I don't like I'm, I'm not necessarily projecting that the Bucks are going to take a running back in day two or anything like that but the 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 fear for Rashad White is if anything changes volume wise things could quickly turn into a disaster you I mean you have an offensive coordinator change that will change. That I mean, there, there's an immediate change for Tampa Bay, but last year, only seven runs over 15 or more yards on 299 rushing attempts. I mean, that is that truly is uh, something special. Uh, I'm sorry, on a, a 272 attempts, and then his fantasy points per opportunity, it's below league average. Basically, saying. If he's not going to get all those touches, like I said, things could turn quickly uh, that he doesn't pay off the ADP. Right now, with the situation as it is, okay, you can talk me into Rashad White, but he's more, uh, as of right now, I'd be more scared investing in best ball with, without the information from the draft. All right, uh, we are looking forward to counting down the top 10 early running back rankings on Thursday's episode. But that'll do it for today. A reminder, head to ultimatedraftkit.com. Pick that up. Get that pre-order pricing. Get into the Dynasty Pass. We'll catch you on Thursday. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.